Walther Funk, the 18th of August 1890 to the 31st of May 1960, was a German economist and Nazi official who served as Reich Minister for Economic Affairs from 1938 to 1945 and was tried and convicted as a major war criminal by the International Military Tribunal at Nuremberg. Sentenced to life in prison, he remained incarcerated until he was released on health grounds in 1957. He died 3 years later. Early life Funk was born into a merchant family in 1890 in Danskamen present-day Sosnovka in the Russian Kaliningrad Oblast near Trikanin in East Prussia. He was the only one of the Nuremberg defendants who was born in the former eastern territories of Germany. He was the son of Weizenbaumeister Walter Funk the Elder and his wife Sophie Chat. He studied law, economics, and philosophy at the Humboldt University of Berlin and the University of Leipzig. In World War I, he joined the infantry, but was discharged as unfit for service in 1916. In 1920, Funk married Louise schmidt sieben Following the end of the First World War, he worked as a journalist, and in 1924 he became the editor of the center-right financial newspaper The Berliner Borsenzeitung. Political life Funk, who was a nationalist and anti-Marxist, resigned from the newspaper in the summer of 1931 and joined the Nazi party, becoming close to Gregor Strasser, who arranged his first meeting with Adolf Hitler. Partially because of his interest in economic policy, he was elected a Reichstag deputy in July 1932, and within the party, he was made chairman of the Committee on Economic Policy in December 1932, a post that he did not hold for long. After the Nazi party came to power, he stepped down from his Reichstag position and was made chief press officer of the Third Reich. Third Reich career. In March 1933, Funk was appointed as a state secretary Staatssekretar at the Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda Reichsministerium für Volksaufklärung und Propaganda. In 1938, he assumed the title of Chief Plenipotentiary for Economics He also became Reich Minister of Economics in February 1938, replacing Hallmar Schacht, who had been dropped in November 1937. Schacht had been dismissed in a power struggle with Reichsmarschall Hermann Göring, who was quick to tie the ministry more closely to his four-year plan office. <laughs> Confiscation of Jewish property At Nuremberg, Funk was accused by Allied prosecutors of having been closely involved in the state confiscation and disposal of the property of German Jews. He boasted that by 1938, the German state had confiscated Jewish property worth 2 million marks, using decrees from Hitler and other top Nazis to force German Jews to leave their property and assets to the state if they emigrated, such as the Reich flight tax. They were forced by Göring to pay for the damage caused by the Nazis to their own property on Kristallnacht, and increasingly deprived of their personal wealth and assets as the Second World War approached. Reichsbank Between April 1938 to March 1939 Funk was a director of the Swiss-based multinational Bank of International Settlements, and in January 1939, Hitler appointed Funk as president of the Reichsbank, replacing Schacht. He was appointed to the Central Planning Board in September 1943. Nuremberg Despite poor health, Funk was tried with other Nazi leaders at the Nuremberg trials. Accused of conspiracy to commit crimes against peace, planning, initiating and waging wars of aggression, war crimes and crimes against humanity, he argued that, despite his titles, he had very little power in the regime. At the Nuremberg trials American Chief Prosecutor Robert Jackson labeled Funk as the banker of gold teeth referring to the practice of extracting gold teeth from Nazi concentration camp victims, and forwarding the teeth to the Reichsbank for melting down to yield bullion. Many other gold items were stolen from victims, such as jewelry, eyeglasses and finger rings. 
Goring described Funk as an insignificant subordinate, but documentary evidence and his wartime biography Walter Funk, A Life for Economy were used against him during the trial, leading to his conviction on counts 2, 3 and 4 of the indictment and his sentence of life imprisonment. Funk was held at Spandau prison along with other senior Nazis. He was released on 16 May 1957 because of ill health. He made a last-minute call on Rudolf Hess, Albert Speer and Balder von Schirach before leaving the prison. He died three years later in Dusseldorf of diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> 